You know, stuff like this is really real. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, I often uh, will tell the story to my uh, young people about, you know, when I was coming up, uh, hitchhiking was a thing. You know, you stand out there, stick your thumb up, and see if you can get a ride all over town or wherever you was going. You know, and that was something that, you know, they were doing out west, and it made its way to the Midwest, and like a craze, right? Hitchhiking. Well, um, I remember a couple times I hitchhiked with a, a couple older young ladies from church. We hitchhiked someplace I can't remember um and so it let me know that they had done it all the time and done it before uh and several times so one time I did it on the way trying to go to school but I was by myself and the person that picked me up it was an older dude and he picked me up and he wouldn't let me out the car he started driving around, and I was like, oh, shit, this dude, shoot, this is not safe, okay? Because I already knew better than to do something like that in the first place, but I was lazy, and I didn't want to walk, nor did I want to get on the bus. So I'll never forget it. So, of course, your worst nightmare, I had to jump out the car, uh, because back then, I don't think we had the cars, you know, you had to... uh. Automatic. I mean, in other words, it wasn't auto. Um, it wasn't electric, so everything was manual. So the person couldn't lock my door from the other side, but they was trying to lock it, or they did lock it from reaching over. So now I elbowed the guy in his side popped the lock, and jumped out the damn car and start running, okay, running through people's yards and all kinds of crazy shit. I'll never forget it, okay? And that was a, a, a teenager, early teen, right? Okay, yeah, I was an early teenager. I was trying to get when this happened. So anyway, with that being said, this is why this article hit me because girls – and guys are still doing this, and they're not going to never stop. So it's not nothing that I'm sitting up here saying, stop that, you shouldn't do that. It ain't even like that. It's like if you survive, you have a story to tell. There's a lot of us that jumped in cars, and we didn't, they're not here to tell it. That's all. Um, There's an exclusive and and um, from Yawande. Biala, she claims she was nearly kidnapped by her Tinder date. So for those of y'all who go on Tinder, if y'all know who uh, Yawande Biala is, um, I guess she was a, a former Love Island star. Okay. She opened up about a terrifying experience which took place in the middle of nowhere following their first ever meetup over drinks in a bar and admitted she thought this is how people die, and I will be next. Yawande grew increasingly concerned when the man started scratching her leg with his nails while driving her home and asking her what color her underwear was. She says she, um, after checking uh, his with his fingers to see what, if she was wearing any uh, knickers. <laughs> the scientist had arranged to go on a date through Tinder with a man whose identity she didn't reveal, referring to him only as Bob. Yuende says, so obviously met this guy who won't be mentioned, so his name will not be mentioned uh, right. We're going to call him Bob. Right. Met Bob in Tinder, then decided to go on a date. Why I don't know. 
putting safety first, reality star explained that her mother dropped her off. And although the man didn't look like his Tinder profile, he wasn't too bad. She said, I got my ma'am to drop me off somewhere closest enough from the house, pick me up right, and looked at him, and I thought, mm, not too bad. You don't look like your Tinder picture, but you're not way too in, too far off. Uh, we were in the car. We got into the bar and got some drinks. And it was going grand. I said to him, listen, I thought you were going to be a psychopath. But it turns out you're actually a dis decent person. And we started laughing. Then we were headed back to his car. Um, right? And with me, obviously, most people know I'm not really the most affectionate type of person. When I say I don't really like affection, I'm being deadly serious. It doesn't take me a while, and I'm not messing. So he kind of, so he kind of, so he had this hand around my waist. I was a little bit uncomfortable because unless you get, to, I get to know you, I'm hesitant when it comes to touching. You know, bodies are not meant for touching by strangers, are they? But then I soon realized that he wasn't going to be just grabbing me by the waist. He was checking to see if I was wearing knickers, which is pants. I could literally feel his fingers going up and down multiple times. So I'm thinking, what are you trying to do? You Wendy explained how she saw this as a sign number one. But considered that perhaps she wasn't just used to physical affection, she proceeded to get in his car. She said, so me being me, I was like, right, maybe this is normal for people to like affection. Maybe this is how, uh, what people do. Now, why are you on Tinder if you're that uh, crazy? Uh, so I'm just going to go with it, and this is going to be fine. Got into the car, put my seatbelt on. He was driving me home. Now, bear in mind, I live in me. And people who live in Meath near Enfield is in the middle of nowhere. There are cows, there are sheep, and they're right in the center of it. I live in the middle of nowhere. So he's driving me home, and he starts feeling my legs. I mean, not feeling, but scratching it with his nails. For some reason, he thought this was sexy. He starts scratching my legs. I'm thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I have no credit. I can't call anyone. I can't actually jump out of the car. Uh, I was in the middle of nowhere. and What am I going to do? And then he starts asking me, like, what color are my underwear? And I thought I was going to be kidnapped. I literally did. I was like, this is how people die and get locked up in dungeons. This is how it happens. I was too scared to react because I was like, what if it goes south? And he just goes insane. Then what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to tell you. She goes on and on and on and on. Um, she got him to drop her off eventually at some random estate. And I'm going to encourage uh, those of y'all who know her, because I don't. Yuende explained how she saw the signs of her life flashing before her. And so for a lot of you young girls who like to jump in cars with these guys you don't know, trying to get a lift from A to B. Remember, we've all done it. So I'm not, you know. Judging it, no shame. That's one of the things you have to really be careful about, man or woman, jumping in somebody's car. A stranger that you completely don't know. And trying to get from point A to point B. Okay. All right. Just a word of advice. 
If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share it to the video. And I'll see you in the next one. What y'all think though, family? Any of y'all ever had experience before I go? That y'all have jumped y'all butts in somebody's car? Didn't have no business being in there? Took you on a ride you never forgot? Or do you know somebody that did it? Share your experiences, please. And I'll see you in the next one.